What we grow here is pretty diverse. We have 98% of Australia's dried fruit, 74% of Australian table grapes, which actually make up about 95% of Australian table grape exports, 24% of all citrus. And then, you know, it just goes on. It's, it's just an amazing food bowl. In the last couple of years, the amount of money we've seen invested in new packing sheds, in citrus, in table grapes, almond plantations, we've got new wineries being built. It's definitely a positive for our region. 70% of the wine made in this country comes from the Riverina, Griffith, Mildura, which is Murray-Darling, and the Riverland of South Australia. So when the buyers from all over the world come to buy Australian wine, they don't head to Margaret River, they don't head to Langholm Creek. They come here because they're looking for a price. We're not so much now seen as a bag-in-a-box uh, region. We're streets ahead, our cost of our fruit, our cost of our large-scale operations in wineries are a lot less than the smaller boutique um, regions of Australia. Sunraysia producers are diversifying um, their production in terms of commodity, um, in terms of geography and in terms of the, the varieties that they're actually growing, um, which you know, in turn de-risks their business to an extent, but it also improves their profitability. Collaboration of growers, um, systems and organisations, um, the use of technology, um, water efficiency, land use, irrigated areas, they're all part of the chain and the system that we need to utilise to get the best result. When we had this idea of, of starting this business, we, we knew that if we always grew a quality product, there'd always be a home for it. We, we always try and give the customer the best experience. So we, when we're harvesting our own fruit, we try, and, we try and get off the tree, into the packing shed, through the grater as quick as possible, and to the customer as quick as possible the fresher the better. Collaboration across people within the industry is um, starting to really take hold as a, as a common trend. For example, we see you know, some of our customers who grow citrus will send that citrus to another um, packer who will pack that fruit out for them and market it for them. And in return, that farmer has his avocados packed and marketed by this other farmer. So, you know, in terms of industry collaboration, um, we're starting to see that really you know, improve bottom line um, profitability for our farmers. The challenges are being cost effective, being productive, um, producing what the consumer wants, and that's a quality product. I think if Sunraysia is to, is to do any more growing than it's doing at the moment, we need, um, you know, we need, we need some better stabilisation in the water industry. Um, I think we need more supply. We've, we've actually got diminishing supply at the moment, not only due to a um, bit of a dry spell we're going through, but the, the basin plan is, um, is taking some of the available water for horticulture. So it's going to be really tricky the next few years to see how that plays out. The overseas markets play a huge role in the growth potential for Sunraysia. China has a rapidly growing middle class and Sunraysia and Australia more broadly have a very, very strong reputation in China in particular um, for producing clean, green um, and safe food. Um, and they're, they're willing and able to pay for it, this growing middle class. If you're going to be exporting to somewhere like China, you've got to have a pretty big parcel of fruit um, and you've got, to, you've got to be there all the time, not just in and out. So what I would probably do if I was going to tackle it, I would probably want to collaborate with, with some bigger players. Um, you probably, there's no point, if you've only got a couple of containers of, of fruit to export, there's probably no point trying to do it yourself. Uh, you might want to either consider getting with a few other growers and, and trying to find a, you know, a good quantity of fruit and try and string it out over a longer period of time. If we're going to command premium prices, and we need premium prices because we, we have the highest cost of production anywhere in the world, then we have to put quality on the market. So if we want to improve our farm gate returns, then we've got to focus on quality. And it's not always about growing the largest crop, it's actually about growing the crop that fits the size profile, that fits the colour profile and, you know, ultimately the flavour profile because, you know, we're aimed at the world's consumers that are prepared to pay a premium, so let's give them what they deserve.